This is Envision Self Healing Podcast, episode number 24. Hi, I'm Will Fuller. And I'm Richard Miller. And we are the co-creators of EnvisionSelfHealing.com and are dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. The topic this week is, can nutrition improve your eyesight? And the question of the week is, how can I help my TMJ? So Richard, how's the world of self-healing been treating you over these last few weeks? It's been a while. It has been a very long time. And uh, I've been, for our listeners, I've been uh, remodeling my new house while Will was away in England. I was madly uh, buying bathtubs and tile <laughs> and doors and hinges. He was making the most of his, his time off. All right. So I was, <laughs> it was more about self-healing my, my house. house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but one of the interesting things that came up was, uh, this is the first time I've done a house on my own. Mm-hmm. And used to do them with my ex-wife. And she has very good vision, very good color vision. And this time I had just my own eyes to work on in terms of remodeling this house. Okay. So there was a lot of doubt as to whether I could pull off these kinds of decisions like uh, color. Uh, and that's why it's stripy, aluminous pink <laughs> and green, is it? <laughs> I, yeah, so want... I just went with lime green everywhere because I figured I could see it. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I thought you knew. No, no. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's exactly the kinds of thoughts that went through my head. Am I capable of doing this? Yeah. Um, so it was interesting. Yeah. So, but you can get away with pink in San Francisco. It's that's fine. true. It's true. <laughs> so it was, it, I came up, up against my own sort of self-image of uh, what I am capable of with the vision problem that I have. Okay. And uh, it was an interesting sort of edge to come up to. And realize, okay, I can see what I can see, and I can make perfectly good decisions, uh, even with less vision than the average person on the street. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I've done pretty well. You have. You yeah. have. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. And it's interesting because because um, over these last few weeks, I've been sort of going through the the same thing, the difficulties of, of being out of my comfort zone, of not being in... San Francisco around, you know, being around everybody that knows me and also me being comfortable with my surroundings and sort of you, you question yourself and what you're capable of, right. of doing and whether you should go in certain dark areas or be in, I don't know, very busy public places or what have you. Yeah, and you immediately have an image of yourself as being more helpless than you really are. And maybe turning to help from someone that you don't necessarily need to do at that moment. And it's just about self-doubt. And, uh, and in some ways, as we do that, I think that's a normal kind of reaction to people who have a vision loss, particularly. Yeah. And, uh, but the problem is you then become sort of more dependent. Mm-hmm. And in, in, in reality, you're using your eyes less. So yeah. you're actually, it's sort of a spiral of, uh, well, I can't do that, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to try yeah. and I'm not going to use my eyes in this circumstance. And then I'm not going to use my eyes in that circumstance. And that leads to just using your eyes less and less, which of course is then going to make them worse and worse. Because right. If you don't use it, then you lose it. So. Exactly. So, uh, I was, that was the struggle I was going through. It's like, I can make these decisions. I can tell, and I would do things like, um, I would, I would, you know, have this conversation with my contractor saying, I can't see color at all. You know, I can't see this. <laughs> And then he'd say, well, what color is this? And was, you know, do you like this better? And I'm like, and I would be able to identify, yeah. oh yeah, I know that's green and I know that's blue. Yeah. And you know, it, it wasn't as. That, um, that was just like when we were in the, uh, in the, ju- in the jewelry store in, uh, in Brazil, in Brazil. And, uh, there was me and <clears throat> Melissa and we were sort of looking at all these um, gems and stuff. It was a gem museum mm-hmm. and, um, they went to show Richard some of these different colors of stone and me and Melissa said, uh, oh, he's. Oh, he's, he's colorblind. He's colorblind. Yeah. And the, the woman who has no vision improvement experience went, well, hold on. Well, let's see what he sees. That's right. She did. And told me and, and Melissa off. 
And, uh, and Richard went, oh, well, I think that's blue. And she went, yeah. Uh, I think that's green. And she went, yeah. And he got all six of these colours. Right. Sort of put me and uh, me and Melissa to shame there. It was a nice little reminder for us. And then I was picking stones, you know, like within a range. Like I was picking yeah. aquamarine stones and like this one versus that one. And I was able to do it as well. So. Yeah. So it just goes to show that, you know, you a lot of the time we're more capable right. than, than what we think of ourselves exactly so and uh, and that really sort of reminds me of it's i mean it's been a busy couple of weeks it's a sh- shame that we had a couple of weeks off we just didn't get a chance to fit the podcast in but obviously uh, in my mind i've been doing the podcast anyway you guys yeah. have been missing out um but a quick roundup certainly just what you were talking about there actually i noticed when i went to london uh, i actually found it very difficult and there was just just thousands of people, you know, especially the underground, all different directions, um, not really knowing where I was going. Um, and I was with my fiance, and she's, you know, very good at public transport, and you know, she's got perfect vision, so right. she's quite good at darting through crowds and and sort. She's of... skinny too. That helps. <laughs> she is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she was sort of uh, skim between two people, and then I'm sort of I'm a bit sheepish and don't really because I don't want to bump into anyone, so right. I sort of hang back a little bit. And then that gap closes, and then before I know it, I'm just lost in a right. sea of people, and she's ten people in front. Right. Um, and then, of course, when we went to London, uh, you know, what else are you going to do? We went shopping, so we were on Oxford Street, and that was just it was just chaos, just so many people, uh. and and I just got this image of me. It must have been like a pinball machine, sort of bouncing around from all these different <laughs> people in this busy high street. But again, I noticed I was normally I would feel a lot more confident in that situation and right. I would I know what direction I'm going in and I would just go and I noticed I was being a lot more dependent on my fiance to sort of I wanted to hold her hand I didn't want her walking off in front of me I wanted her to help me where I was going and right you know and say you know I'd bump into someone then I'd be frustrated and that you know if, if she had been helping me then that wouldn't have happened it was really interesting because it was you know, obviously with the Olympics in London and it's it's amazing there right now and I really enjoyed myself. But they were estimating an extra 10,000 people every day wow. were arriving in London wow. extra. So I was just in this, this sea of people. <laughs> it's going to get worse and worse. <laughs> I know. So I, I remember thinking, well, you know, maybe my vision's getting a lot worse yeah. because I don't remember ever being that um, That's poor out. in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so but a couple of things... When I went up a week later, I was a lot better. And in fact, instead of waiting um, for my fiancé to direct me where to go, I just took charge. Uh I was a lot more comfortable with the transport system. I knew what shops I was going to. I knew where I wanted to go. And I just walked off in my direction. And if she didn't keep up, then, (laughs) you know, then, you know, that was up to her. Nice. Um, So, but it it meant I didn't have any problems. No, I wasn't necessarily bumping into people. I felt more confident. I knew where I was going. Exactly the same situation, exactly the same place, mm-hmm. but I was more confident and I felt a lot better, um, you know, in the direction that I was going. And also, you know, I felt like my, my vision was better in that environment probably because I wasn't as stressed. Another reason why I think maybe I felt that my vision was worse is I'm being so much more observant with my vision. Right. And certainly over these last you know, six months or so last year, I've been talking a lot about how I'm noticing this sort of static in my periphery. And I'm over the last few months in particular, since Brazil, I've been really paying attention to what you can see, almost what is the possibilities. Because it's only been in the last year did I really realize what my limits were with my vision Mm -hmm. and what, um, I don't want to say normal people, it's a terrible word, but people without uh, peripheral conditions how much they can actually see. I, I'm just amazed at how much people can see in their yeah. everyday. Yeah. So, but now I've almost opened Pandora's box. Right. And now I know what people can see out in the periphery. And the more I'm starting to wake up that outer periphery, it's I always want a little bit more and see a little bit more. So I'm actually starting to get to the point of frustration. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Which yeah. you would think is a negative thing. Right. In a strange way, it's a very positive thing. Right. Um, I'm getting frustrated that I don't have that. Um, and that I, So when I'm out in these big, busy public areas, it's sort of, ah, why can't, why can't I see that? Why can't I see that? You know, 
and it's it's just um well and it's too busy at that point for you to maybe appreciate i see static but i'm not seeing you know what that static is and before you might have appreciated oh i just see static that might have been good enough for you yeah but now it's like i want to actually know what that thing is in the static yeah yeah you kind of upped your your ante in some way (laughs) yeah Yeah. And, I've, you know, and, and for me, I would have to just stand there for a couple of seconds and take everything in. Mm-hmm. And, of course, being in a busy street, everything's changing and there's mm-hmm. cars and noises and drilling. You know, it's just it's chaos. So it's almost overwhelming. But what was really interesting is I, I really sort of felt that my, my vision had got worse. And also being when I went uh, to France in Bordeaux, again, unfamiliar, lots of people, mm-hmm. lots of random transport that mm-hmm. you know are you going to get run you know what's the bike laws what's the tram laws you know am I just going to get <laughs> run over in the middle of nowhere yeah um, but I noticed that when I came back that my periphery had actually improved and that that surprised me um, one because you know my diet and everything was so poor which is what we're going to talk about yeah. in a minute um, and I know that did have a part of it but when I came back I noticed that I was access I was accessing more in my Right. periphery mm-hmm. and I think that was down to that I was in those environments what you were just saying about if you don't use it yeah then you lose it I was in that environment and I was desperately trying to use my periphery I was the whole time the whole two weeks I was trying to take all this information in mm-hmm. and that frustration was making me want to use it more and more and more right so to me it meant that when I came back that in fact my periphery has now improved because I was trying to use it more and more. The thing that occurs to me is that, you know, before you started doing self-healing, you were so dependent on your central vision and your ability to move your head around, to yeah. take in information. And you've sort of changed your whole paradigm of looking. Now yeah. you're like trying to use, quote, a normal person's approach, which uh-huh. is central vision plus yeah. periphery to gain, C- act, you know, central vision for detail, exactly. periphery for the world around you, the, the where and the what thing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but that was, I mean, obviously I could go on for another hour about exactly, this, but, yeah. but it was really interesting to have those observations and it, to, before we talked about positive observations and, you know, I mean, for a good week, you know, it was very difficult because I felt my vision was getting worse. Mm-hmm. And it was only after working with it, taking some time and thinking about it and sort of um, being in that environment again and again, was I able to start thinking more positively about it mm-hmm. and how, you know, it, it could, it's a good thing. It means that I'm moving forward. Yeah. The fact yeah. that I know it. Yeah, and I think it's inevitable that when you hit challenging situations, you're going to think uh, at first, sort of like, oh, you know, things are worse. Yeah. Yeah. But then once you, in hindsight, you realize you really have progressed. So, yeah, good. So I think it's about a good time to move on to topic of the week. And the topic of the week this week is, can nutrition help your eyesight? Now, one reason, as I said before, that we've sort of picking up on this topic is uh, Richard and I have been on holiday for the last couple of weeks. And uh, uh, Yeah, I would say nutrition has not been high on our list, even though we know better. Yeah, so I think yesterday we, we discussed it over a salad. Moment. We did. Yeah, we yeah. spent like a good three hours discussing nutrition yesterday. And, um, and I think we ended up labeling it the holiday diet. Yes, right. <laughs> which um, which just consists of just not very good. Uh, Whatever food is in, put in front of you, yeah, basically, yeah. or is it convenient at that moment? The quickest thing. And I, oh. and I was in France, so my diet was cheese, meat, and bread and wine. That's pretty much <laughs> all I ate for a week. Yeah. And then obviously being at home, visiting a lot of family and friends, and summertime it was, I guess, just lots of barbecues and lots of um, pub food, restaurant food, yeah. nothing overly... Uh, nutritious so i mean there's nutrients in it but not um, yeah not and necessarily. I, I think we're better that we don't again we don't maybe give ourselves enough credit we're not running off to mcdonald's or you know yeah. we have we have set a limit there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah no mcdonald's is uh it's off the list yeah 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 for sure never going there again no i went I'll, I'll spare you my mcdonald's story yeah um how i got food poisoning for about Three or four days after it at McDonald's, <laughs> which is why I never touch it again. Certainly, this is something we've not really discussed before. We've touched on it in our personal blogs, 
um, that you can check out on our website at envisionselfhealing.com. But we felt we wanted to dedicate a couple of weeks to this topic because it really is such an important part of self-healing and vision improvement. And it's not really something that most of us think about, um, especially when we're focused so much on eye exercises. Right. And then it'll provide motivation for us to get back on, our, <laughs> yeah. on, on a better diet from our holiday diet too. So, so certainly, um, so I myself is in um, uh, day three of what I'm calling a juice cleanse. Mm -hmm. um, not a juice fast which is what both Richard and I have done previously the difference this time is that I'm still eating solid foods I'm still having uh, fruit and, and vegetables um, whereas the juice fast is just juicing right and it's sort of a yeah it's a purging almost process yeah so I'm calling this more of a juice cleanse part of the reason is you know I've, I've had this big trip I've just come back to San Francisco I feel like I need quite a lot of energy over these next few weeks just to give me a to give me a boost and to get you know my system's already got eight hour jet lag and it took me twenty four hours to fly back and yeah. jumping straight into work again and not that we ever stop working but yeah right um, we sitting, we did for a little bit there the computer. a little bit well our minds are always working that's anyway. true that's true um, so but I felt like I needed a bit more energy that maybe the juice fast uh, wouldn't have given me. Which is, uh, which is an important point because, again, it's just being observant about our own bodies and what, are our, you know, what is our body telling us. Right. As much as I would love to just do a juice fast, I just don't think it's necessarily a practical thing for me to be doing right now. Well, and we do sort of support using juicing as a way of supplementing an already healthy diet, to just bring yeah. more nutrients into your diet. Yeah, and we're certainly going to touch base on that over the next couple of weeks and talk about it in a little bit more detail. But as an example, uh, I took a picture this morning. I treated myself um, to a nice organic fruit salad. I went out and, and got all, mm. all, all organic fruit. It's, it's funny how when you're doing these cleanses, the, the first thing I notice that always surprises me on is day three today that my sense of smell just switches on and all of a sudden I can smell everything, yeah. you know, which sometimes isn't a, <laughs> yeah. isn't a great thing. Yeah. Um, but in general, you know, you can really pick up on the, the nuances of food and you're walking down the street and you can tell what oh, someone's cooking in number 32 exactly. and what someone's doing in number 59. Um, so but it, it always amazes me how the body just switches on like that and how yeah. we, we have these abilities and we just don't use them. They're almost dormant. Yeah, and it could be sort of the sort of, the debris of all of this food, sort of non-nutritious food debris, in some ways masks off our senses a little bit. So. Yeah, and I guess if you're always getting something, yeah, you know, I kind of feel like it's the body is saying, okay, this guy's not getting as much food as he should be or yeah. he's not normally getting, so... You know, let's try and heighten the sense of smell so he could can be. find you know, yeah. a bit more food here. Yeah. And it's, it's really, and it happens every time, always yeah. around day three or day four. Yeah, I remember that too. Um, but I also noticed um, a complete contrast between this diet and my my holiday diet. Yeah. I noticed that when I, you know we, we were traveling around, we were sightseeing around Bordeaux, and, and whenever I went into the shop, I always went for um, you know potato chips, right. bread. Things that are really going to fill me up because I knew I was going to be busy for the day. Right. Today I went to the supermarket, starving. You know, I had I juiced in the morning. I didn't have any uh, solid foods. I was just going to have solids for lunch and dinner. Um, but I did juice in the morning. So, but I went in the supermarket. The first thing I saw was a packet of uh, potato chips, Cheetos, and right. And oh, I just turned my stomach. Oh, it just made me feel so sick. It is the, funny how that the, happens. The yeah. Of eating it. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was get to the fruit and veg yeah. section. Yeah. And not only that, but I really wanted fresh, organic. Just the thought of having any sort of chemicals or anything impure yep. in my body, just I didn't want it. Yeah. And it's just, it's amazing how you treat your body with so much more respect, and you know you want to give everything nutritious when you're in that environment yeah. or that situation it's almost have. like the nutritious food leads to more nutritious food and the, yeah, yeah. and the opposite leads you know the mcdonald's leads to more mcdonald's it does <laughs> seem that way yeah and i mean before i thought it was maybe just routine which is one thing i like so much about doing a juice fast or any sort of cleanse is that it breaks that right root, by by nature as animals we just we love routine mm -hmm. um but it felt a little bit different today it was like i was just craving healthy stuff it yeah was like my body was 
you know, the thought of anything else just disgusted me. And, yeah. Uh, the next time you go in a supermarket, think about that and look at the Cheetos. And when you see they're a bright or orange colour, <laughs> think to yourself what that bright orange colour might be because it's not natural. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it just, you know, nutrition plays such an important role uh, in us. That old saying of you are what you eat, I remember being told that by my mum as a kid and by the teachers mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you think of it on a on a micro level, mm-hmm. you know, our, level, you know yeah. what our cells are made of is, you know, it, they're continuously replacing, it's continuously being built. And if we have poor building materials, let's say Richard's house, for example, um, he's using um, fine yeah. material. When you do wood, you know, you're making sure it's solid oak. Yep. Um, you know, you're making sure the found you've redone the foundations, make sure it's nice. The cement and is right, yeah. And you want to use the best material. And if you don't, what's gonna to happen to your house in ten, twenty years time? That's true. I'm it's avoiding gonna, it's true. It's, it's just gonna fall apart. Yeah, right? I'm avoiding like particle board things, things like that. It's the same process, yeah. So if we're putting these materials in our body that um, are poorly built materials, then that's what our body is built on. And I've really noticed a difference. And remember, Richard, before we said about how, how maybe we're more sensitive to these things because mm-hmm. of our visual conditions. Yes. Um, you know, I certainly noticed over the last few weeks that not having my diet of fresh fruits and vegetables without juicing every day, you know, I really struggled that much more with my vision. Mm-hmm. Um, and now coming back onto the healthier diet, you know, I feel a lot more fresh and my vision feels better and I'm picking up more information in the periphery and if you think about it on a long term that's short term but long term if you're continuously eating nutritious food good nutritious food and as our cells replace themselves as our body replaces itself we're replacing it with good materials well and i hate to say this to our visually challenged uh peers out there but i think this is this is something we were discussing yesterday in our three-hour discussion of nutrition is those of us who have these conditions are basically, we have to do this. Yeah. You know, there's no choice. Yeah, and it's, I mean, part of part of the whole doctor thing of um, there's nothing you can do, you know, go home, wait for a cure in 10 years' time. Yeah. Means that we don't have any response, you know, nothing could uh, be done. Exactly, we don't have to do anything. Yeah, so you can, you know, you could eat four steaks and yeah. uh, drink a, a liter of wine and you know and you're fine because yeah. nothing could be done yeah um but in fact you know that's not the case and and anybody that changes to a healthy diet I, we guarantee you will see a difference in your vision and you'll certainly feel a lot better yeah by changing to a more nutritious diet but when i mean we're certainly not here just to lecture you about eating healthy you know we're realistic uh we both enjoy a nice big juicy steak yeah. Um, certainly, me more than Richard likes a glass of red wine. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're we're not here just to lecture you um, on how you should eat healthy, and because you know that's not that's not us, and yeah. we're certainly not. But basically, the point is is to try and have the the more nutritious diet, and that it does make a difference, and it will make you. Hopefully, it will make you. You know, reach when you go to the supermarket for uh, green leafy vegetables instead of some potato chips or, right. you know, it's the same with all of this stuff. We always try and talk about how the exercises help right. improve your eyesight because you're more likely to do it. Right. So the same with nutrition. If you understand how this can improve your eyesight and I mean, obviously, you know, healthy living, it's such a big boost now with high levels of obesity coronary heart disease i mean it's just it's just not necessarily explained how this can help you and i think if more people knew why good nutrition will help you and avoid um conditions in the future then i think people are more likely to want to eat healthy Mm -hmm. yeah um and there's just a lack of unfortunately there's a lack of information there right Um, right you know, with with marketing nowadays, you can say anything you want in marketing. You can say, you know, eating, I don't know, a McDonald's only has 400 calories, but it's 400 calories of pure saturated fat, you know. And when you see things, um, packets of potato chips that have 60% less fat, there's still, it's still like 80% fat. It's just compared to what it was previously. Exactly, yeah, so, yeah. 
It's just having that sort of knowledge. Now, in particular for vision, one thing that good nutrition is good for us and good for our eyes is vitamin A. Now, I'm sure many of us have heard of that. And now, in particular, the reason why the vitamin A is good for us is we use it in the process of phototransduction. Right, and phototransduction is the process of turning light into electricity that is then sent to your brain. It's the, it breaks down a chemical called retinol into two components. And vitamin A is part, oh, in the Americanese, vitamin A. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Vitamin. <laughs> vitamin A <laughs> is, is one of the components of that process. Yeah. Very, very important process. Yeah. So, um, so obviously, without this vitamin A, then, you know, the whole visual process isn't working. And certainly um, with RP, they're starting to come to the conclusion that they might have something to do with this regenesis of the cells when it comes to phototransduction, which right. is interesting. And they've also found with RP in particular that if you get a good source of vitamin A in your daily diet, then you can reduce and slow down the degeneration of RP for up to 10 years. Which makes total sense. If you, it's just very common sense if you're if you're using the uh, if the retina is using vitamin A in its in its uh, process of rebuilding, why wouldn't that maintain your your retina? And I'm sure if this is works for RP, then it's also for other any yeah. any really retinal condition. Exactly. And if you think about previous diets, you know it's only really the last twenty that well post post World War Two, I guess, mm -hmm. um, with the industrialization of food to try and pump out as much food as cheap as possible. Right. That we're not getting as much nutrients as we used to. Right. So whereas, you know, now they say, oh, you need a supplement to, and we will talk about this a little bit later, to, to supplement your diet with the vitamin A. If you think about previous, you know, pre-World War II diets, they got enough vitamin A. Right, and they didn't have fertilizers, you know, prior to World War II. The amount of fertilizers that uh, yeah. we have now, so they so they got more natural nutrition through the soil, things like that. So the the vitamin A that we used to get in our diets, we're just not getting it now. And you know, and, and they're pushing you know five fruits and vegetables a day. Why should you be pushing for that? That should just be natural. Why, yeah, <laughs> why yeah. isn't that naturally in our diet? Right. Um, and they're really trying to work hard on this. And, and if you think about, let's say, a McDonald's, um, you know, you've got a bun, carbohydrates, yeah. um, something that isn't meat. I don't know what, <laughs> no, I think it is meat. Let's not do that. We'll, we'll, let's not get sued <laughs> like Oprah yeah, did. Yeah, no, really. yeah. uh, no, I'm it's, sure it's some form of meat anyway. Yeah, sure, yeah, it's got animal in it anyway. Yeah, we could don't be, know what could be possum or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a hoof, just a bit of hoof. Um, and then you've got French fries yeah. and potatoes, carbohydrates. Right. And the milkshakes actually aren't even milk. That's the same. <laughs> really? No, they're not. So, I mean, you could say that there is some vitamin A in, in the so-called meat. But if you compare that um, to something like, it's called beta carotene, which is, which is a really good natural source of vitamin A, which is when people say that um, carrots are good for your eyesight. Mm -hmm. Then the orange color in that, it's the, the beta carotene is the bright color in food, basically. Right. So, uh, you know, yellow peppers, red tomato, mm -hmm. what gives it that color is the beta carotene. And that is what is a vitamin A, a fine form of vitamin A, which then gets turned into the retinol, which is then used in our eyes. So it's this fine source. It's, it's a better source, the same as material for your house. It's the same material you could get um, cheap wood. What's the type of cheap wood? Uh, MDF, like MDF, that's the, that's the MDF. Legal in America, isn't it? Oh no, MDFs use all the time. Uh, really? um, but particle board is a cheap uh, wood. Okay. It's a ground up sawdust with glue, basically. Right. <laughs> which is what's in which is what's in. It's McDonald's true. Food. It's true. It's like <laughs> similar to a McDonald's <laughs> burger. Really get sued for this. <laughs> um, so, but it does exactly the same job. It holds the house up. It you know holds the doors up. But it's made of two completely different materials. And the end product is an overall building that isn't as strong, isn't going to last as long, and it isn't as good as if you use that good material. And it's off-gassing poisonous things, just like a McDonald's <laughs> yeah, hamburger yeah. would. Yeah. We shouldn't just put... Let's see, if we're going to get a soup, we might as well go for KFC as well. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, and Wendy's. Let's just, let's just knock it all on the head. Yeah. So, um, so there is another very important um, vitamin that's good for your eyes. 
and that's uh, lutein and zeaxanthin. And that's just think you thought of the red orangey color. Now think green. And the lutein and zeaxanthin are the chemicals within your macula in particular. They're a, a vital part of the macula. Mm. So the theory is that you would then eat more of those and that would help your macula. They haven't actually proven this yet, but it's a good theory. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's more and more studies coming out. I mean, we're quite lucky with the eye exercises. Medical science isn't going to study it until there's a big public outcry Mm -hmm. um, that this needs to be done. Um, So feel free to write to your congressman um, or your doctor. Yeah. Um, But luckily there is money in supplements. So they are. Yeah. They are investigating um, yeah. vitamins. So they are doing research in lutein and zeaxanthium. Right. And you will find them in your in your drugstore or supermarket. And you will find studies now that it can help offset and improve macular degeneration. Exactly. And indeed, uh, they've even found a connection with RP and lutein that, again, a decent amount of lutein can help improve and delay retinitis pigmentosa. Right. So there are more and more studies, luckily, uh, with the vitamins. And I think it also protects the eye, doesn't it, from, um, from blue rays? Right. That's the yellow color. The, the reason your um, uh, macula is called the macula lutea, lutea right? Yeah. Is, it means is, yellow spot. Is, it means yellow spot. And that's the lutein in your macula. And that filters out UV uh, rays from hitting your retina. Um, so that's why we would recommend eating more lutein and zeaxanthin. And let's tell them a little bit about, uh, we're going to talk, go into this more next week. Yeah. But the green leafy true. vegetables. Yeah. And actually it's in egg yolks as well. Mm-hmm. So lutein is very prominent in egg yolks. And I must say one thing with the vitamin A that's, that's interesting is that um, people that might think they've got RP, the people that get night blindness. Mm-hmm. Um, is actually a vitamin A deficiency. Right. Isn't that... It's so straightforward yeah. to think of it that There's way. There's going to be all these people with RP out there now wishing that they just had a deficiency and they In vitamin A, yeah. Never know. I mean, try it. That would be a yeah. great testimonial that uh, that all somebody did was was eat lots of... Uh, plenty of vitamin A but and you, vision came back. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of people who are older who think they have... They're basically blind at night. That's true, yeah. And maybe if they did increase vitamin A, it, mm-hmm. might, it might fix it. You know, half those people, yeah. who knows? So one thing that we, we will say is we've talked here about getting increased vitamin A and, and lutein and zeaxanthium, um, and, and that you can just buy it on the shelves. Right. Um, but us, ourselves, we prefer if you got this naturally. Right. Um, and, I mean, I think there's just so much of the body that we're yet to understand um, that, you know, extracting and a a vitamin and then thinking that you can put that in the body and right. that it would respond the same as if it was in a natural food that the body processes itself. It fits so much our Western myths and paradigm of yeah. like extracting a chemical and then yeah. shooting it into you. Yeah. The, the last billion years of evolution of the plants were wrong. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and in fact, we're right. Yeah. <laughs> and we just extract it and put it in your body. You'll be yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so we we do prefer it, obviously, for everyone. I don't know if you can't if you have can't, a healthy uh, diet, then I yeah. guess supplement. Buy the supplements, yeah. Um, but you should certainly check uh, with your doctor before taking supplements because they can be toxic because mm-hmm. you're you're taking them in a concentrated that the body isn't used to that yeah. concentration. It processes it naturally over periods of time. Mm-hmm. Hence, digestion taking you know x amount of time, and you can actually overdose on vitamin A if you take it. Yeah, so it, it is important um, that you do check with your doctor, um, do a bit of research yourself. Um, but we're certainly uh, not necessarily endorsing just taking supplements. Here, right. we're suggesting a nice, healthy diet to get your nutrients, just how we were designed and how we have done for the last right. Right. couple of millions of years. Yeah, and if if you're going to supplement. We, sit, we believe in supplementing with juicing rather than yeah. supplements. So I think it's about a good time to move on to question of the week. And the question of the week this week is, how do I improve my TMJ? 
And this came from a question on, was it YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. 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 And you might think this is a bit of a funny question. We've never really done a, a body question. Again, we're, we're breaking the mold here before we we're talking about nutrition and now we're talking about TMJ. Mm-hmm. Um, but you did a blog on this. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And for me, well, me, me in particular, but probably you as well. Um, I'm constantly uh, battling uh, poor blood flow to my optic nerve. Mm-hmm. And the jaw is very close to the to the eyes and the optic nerve and yeah. and the blood flow coming up through the carotid arteries up to your eyes. Uh, it's a very important point, right, where the jaw and the neck mm-hmm. sort of meet. And uh, Will knows because he works on my jaw every <laughs> once in a while um, that it can be very tight on me. And ironically, so with someone with poor vision, they're leaning forward with their, their neck and head. Yeah. And it's creating tension in the jaw. So it's sort of a spiral again of like Mm -hmm. creating more tension, leading to poor blood flow, leading to poor vision, leading to more leaning forward, (laughs) you know, that whole spiral. And as you're saying there actually about the, Mm -hmm. the, the tension of leaning forward, it's also a source of anxiety when when we're anxious or anger, or we tend to hold it tight in our jaws. Yeah. So anybody, you know, of any sort of visual condition that are anxious in their environment, you tend to hold it in your jaw as well. Yeah. So by releasing your jaw and loosening the jaw, then you're also going to help get rid of some of that stress and anxiety, as well as help improve blood flow to the eyes, which is anyone that knows our work and has been following our programs will know that blood flow is obviously key. Um, we've just talked for the last you know, 15 minutes about nutrition. Well, right. The blood flow is the delivery system. Exactly. Um, so there's no point having good nutrition if you don't uh, delivering it to the cells in the yeah. first place. So it is important to get good blood flow to the eyes, which is why TMJ, which sadly is a very common, I didn't even realize I had it until I started doing TMJ exercises. Right. Uh, and now oh, that's this, right. I know it's great click in my jaw. Um, that I'm trying to overcome and it is improving. Um, but I certainly noticed now how tight my jaw was and I, I had yeah. no idea. Um, so, but the exercises for this, there's a very attractive video of, Oh, right. It's me. That's right. <laughs> of Richard doing it's team. sort of a viral thing on YouTube because I look so silly doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody did comment actually that, uh, this doesn't help TMJ. You just want to look, make him look silly. <laughs> and it is one of our favorite, but I'm glad nobody ever got to see the picture that we took of me doing the TMJ exercise. That's right. Because that's even more embarrassing. Yeah. Um, notice the vain one out of the two of us. So, um, so yeah, check that video out on our website. Go to the I exercise tab, um, or go to the exercises tab. Sorry, and look for TMJ exercise or jaw or exercise, jaw rotation, something, something, like, something that. like that. We don't know. Our own website. <laughs> um, we've got too much on our plate. Yeah, uh, literally. Yeah, nutrition. That's a salad. No. So, um, so yeah, look that up. You can also uh, you'll see the video there on YouTube as well. And it'll show you the exercises. But in particular, there is a TMJ program right. on our condition section. And I'm sure most of our listeners haven't even noticed. But underneath the eye conditions are some body conditions like arthritis, sciatica. Mm-hmm. Um, and also there we've got TMJ. Right. So uh, head over there and check out the eye, the, the eye exercises, the exercises <laughs> for the TMJ. And it's just... I mean, simply the main one is just jaw rotations, isn't it? Yeah, and then we throw in some, you know, shoulder and stuff. and and Because uh... if you think about it, we're using our jaws just open and close, open and close. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're overusing it, it starts to get tight, building the anxiety, a little bit of caffeine, and, you know, you've got this, this locked jaw. A lot of times when we have joint pain, the reality is the joint is jammed up against itself. And so we're trying to create more space in there. And we use a lot of rotational movements because that's something that our bodies, we just don't get enough of that kind of movement in our joints in general. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the same thing with the jaw joint. We're just giving it rotational, give it more space and more rotational movement. So over time, you start loosening the joint there at the jaw, you loosen the muscles. In that program, there's also plenty of self-massage that you do around the face, get more blood flow there. And after a little while, you'll start to notice um, that it starts freeing up a lot more. And you'll also feel a little bit looser in the jaw. And and when you relieve that anxiety, your mood actually starts to change a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. 
you do start feeling a little bit more uh, lighter, like you're not necessarily carrying the world on your shoulders. Yeah. It sounds even worse. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so certainly check out those exercises there. Loosen up the jaw, get more blood flow to the eyes and start feeling the improvements. So we hope you've enjoyed the podcast this week. We've certainly missed the last couple of weeks doing these podcasts and we look forward to delivering you another fantastic podcast next week on uh, how this nutrition and how you can take it a little bit step further to start helping the body and start helping your vision. If you want to find out a little bit more about eye exercises and head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com where you will find a free ebook there that you can download that takes you through some of the very basics of eye exercises and explains a little bit on how indeed they can improve your eyesight. You can also head over to our Facebook fan page and you'll see some pictures there. I put up some of, uh, of the healthy eating that we've been doing over this week. And uh, we also answer some questions over there from our audience and uh, help build a little bit more of a community over yeah, there. Maybe help with some pictures of my doorknobs up there just to get people. <laughs> <laughs> That's no? a very random comment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should, yeah. Let's, let's yeah, do doorknobs, it. hinges, yeah. maybe. I yeah. think that's, that's completely relevant <laughs> to the last 35 minutes of the podcast of Nutrition and TMJ. So we're definitely gonna, we're definitely gonna put up uh, Richard's doorknob. Uh, we make sure we do that. Look out for that. Yeah. Um, very exciting stuff there. Yeah. And they are nice. They, they are, are nice very nice. I must say, he has yeah. had them repainted. They are original 19... 1907 doorknobs. Yeah. Um, so before you all fall asleep. <laughs> you can also check us both out on Twitter, uh, where we regularly update how we're getting on, and you can find out a little bit more about Richard's doorknobs. <laughs> That's true. Um, what kinds of wood he's using to build his house. Yeah. I think you should start a little house project That's there true. on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, certainly, if you're listening to this on YouTube, then subscribe to our channel, and you'll get one of these uh, podcasts that we do every week sent to you and indeed if you're listening to this on itunes then you can subscribe as well and then that way you can uh, save yourself a little bit of time and have these podcasts sent directly to you so good luck with your eye exercises this week and happy healing and have a good week <laughs>